Hello everybody, it's uh, Kevin here again and this week we're going to be going over some GitHub and some source control. So to start off, we're just going to go to one of our uh, one of our projects here. In this case I'm going to go to my Week 4 Models project. Now that I'm in the project, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up Git Bash. And I'm going to, I'm going to run the uh, command git init. This initialized a new git repository inside of this project. So now that I should go back, so now that I have created this new git repository, we can tell that there's a master branch in here. So if we do like a git log, well, we don't have any commits, so nothing's going to pop up. But if we were to do a git log, some of our commit history would pop up right here. So we can all, we, we can open up our project right here. And we can try to run this here project verify that it does run and I'm just gonna skip on the postman for now we're just gonna take care of all this via the uh, swagger tool right here I'm gonna try this here out request body send in the ID of test well that's not a good ID. <laughs> How about like one, two, three? That'd probably be better. And the name of test one. Copy this here. Add another object and then another one. One, two, three, four. One, four, three. Test two and test three. Ensure that this runs properly and it does it returns our object here which is what this is supposed to be doing you can tell right here it returns our input which has been deserialized into a list of type doge so what we're going to do is we're going to add some stuff here now this is just an example so say we want to add a quick feature here or instead of a feature we just want to add a log right here we're going to tell the user that we are returning the input and this is this is not good right here where I'm just returning the input I want to return a action result so we're gonna return an action result of accepted and inside of that action result we're gonna return the input try rerunning this it's building it looks like it built properly so we're good there I'm gonna stop this project and I'm going to go back to git here and I'm going to do git add dot what git add dot does is it adds all of these here files to what we're going to be connect what we're going to be committing so you always want to run git add dot before committing anything this here just adds it I believe the term is staging so this here is going to handle just setting up all the files so that you can commit them so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a commit git commit dash m uh, and this is just going to be a uh, first push not first push first commit because we're not pushing anything quite yet so here's all the files that are going to be committed and before we can push anything to any repo what we have to do is we have to create a repository so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to open up uh, github.com and not that one we just want to open up github this here's my page. I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to call this lecture example C sharp you know, CMSC 2240. Description just a short lecture. Uh, verify that this is selected as private. We do not want to use, or not private, I'm sorry, that it's selected as uh, public. We do not want to use private. Private is good for any project where you don't want other people to see this repository, but as of right now, I want to be able to grade your assignment, so we're going we're gonna to select public here. You can add a readme if you'd like. I'm just going to skip on that. Create this here repository. What you can do, select HTTPS, copy this here. So control C, go back to our project, and um, open up our git bash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this here, git push origin master. 
Now, this will not work because origin is not defined yet. So this is what you would normally do if you wanted to push to whatever repository is set up to work with this project. This is not going to work though, so what we have to do is we have to add this here string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shift insert. That inserts the string. And then I'm going to write master. It's going to push it to the master branch. And it's uh, pushing it. It got done pushing now. And we can tell right here it got pushed to the master branch. We're going to go right back to our GitHub page. Reload. And here it is. Here is what we added to this here repository. Here's our week4.cs. And here is our changes. So now that this is set up, we can go back to our project here and now see we want to add another property to this here doge object so I'm going to add a public and I don't want this there you go public string description so that's just this description is going to be part of this doge object now so now whenever we pass something into this here list of type doge it's going to expect a description as well so what we're going to do is we're going to try running this And there's our new fields. I'm going to click try it out. And I'm just going to pass this example stuff into there. Looks good. It returned exactly what we passed into it, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. So now that we have verified that this does work, we're going to go back to this, stop our project, and we're going to do the same thing again. Git add dot git commit dash m added it added another property to the doge object now we're gonna push get push now this should work origin master and it's not so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our instructions here because I have some instructions here that you can pull up and I'm not even going to pull them up from there. I'm just going to go ahead and open them up from here. So I do not have them there. Go to my downloads. Go to my get instructions. And we can tell right here if we want to change the handle name, we can do this right here. Get remote add and then the new handle name so get remote add is what we have to do get remote add um, I want to name this here repo and we can do a shift insert once again now we added we assigned this here string to this uh, variable repo so now what we can do is we can do git push repo master And that'll work just fine. Now, it might work on yours after you do the, that initial push. It might work on yours where you can just do the origin, but in my example, it didn't. But this is just a, a real world case of sometimes it's not exactly the way that the instructions state. So, this is how we would handle that. We would add that uh, handle. So, we added our feature. That's pretty interesting. But the issue is that say we want to go and work on another feature but we don't want to be pushing this to the master branch just because the master branch is production so when we're working in production we and for, for some reason we push some code that's going to be causing some bugs that's obviously going to be an issue because when we start working with what's known as like pipelines pipelines automatically handle builds of the project and they automatically deploy if you have them set up to do so they automatically the, deploy the changes on this branch or on whatever branch you have selected to show up on the on the production page or the production version of the application so we typically don't want to always be pushing to our master branch or our main branch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a git log command git log that's gonna show us our commit history it's gonna show us the commit ID it's gonna show us who committed right here this is who committed this stuff and it'll show us the date pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting stuff if I'm able to if I go and I pull up a much longer project, like for example, I go to my Arduino auto start and I open this here with git bash, 
do a get log, we can tell who's made all these changes. So that's that's a pretty useful command to start using the get log. It just gives you an idea of what's been going on, who's been pushing what to where, to which branches. So now say we want to add another feature, we want to add a we want to add a function. It's just to add another function in here, void uh, return. We just want to return from this function a string. And this takes in a string input. And actually it's not going to be void, it's going to be a string, of course. We're going to return the input. So now what we're going to do is we're going to call this here function instead of instead of doing our console.log doge.name we're going to call this function every time. So we're going to do our return string doge.name. Save this. Now we're going to go here. We're going to create a new branch. So get branch and we're going to name our new branch interesting feature. Now we're going to check out our branch. What the checkout does is it it leaves this branch and it moves over to this other branch. So get checkout interesting feature. Now we're in the interesting feature branch. If we do a git log, it has all of the commit history of the main branch. But now if we start making any pushes to this here interesting feature branch, they're all going to be stored in this here branch and in the log of this branch. So let's do a git add dot git commit dash m added some interesting functionality and then we're going to push to our repo and now we have to specify which branch we want to push to so we want to push to our interesting feature branch interesting feature and now we pushed our stuff to this interesting feature branch so if we do a git log again now we can tell that we have some stuff in our interesting feature branch but if we leave this here branch we do a get checkout master well now do a get log again and we don't have any of that commit history anymore so that's that's where it really comes into into use now it didn't up okay it did update this is excellent this is a perfect example so Notice how this now notice how that feature stuff went away now that I went back to this branch. Notice also how some of these some of the lines on the side of the edits that we some of the git changes that will show up right here, they're gone. Now you have the option to go ahead and take care of it via our git changes tool right here. I don't like to use the git changes tool personally. I would much rather do it via the command line. It's in my opinion much easier. So now that we have pushed to this branch, we're not going to handle pull requests right, uh, quite yet. We're going to go and start doing some crazy stuff. So we messed up our we messed up our project really bad. Now this is a really small project. We just have two object models here. Well, one object model and then one broken object model. So we're going to try to compile this, and of course it's not going to work. It's going to give us some build issues. So we can spend 10, 20, 30 minutes trying to figure out how, how to get this to work. Or we can go back to our git and we can do a git reset hard master. And if you look back here, give it some time to update, it'll go right back to our master branch. This is incredibly useful when you're working on a project and you start messing some stuff up and you just want to get back to a clean state. That command will save your life. Git reset dash dash hard and then the branch name. Get used to using this command, it's incredibly useful. So we made our changes to our interesting feature branch. So right now we're in our master branch, so we're going to go back to our interesting feature. Our interesting feature branch, so I'm going to go do a git checkout. Interesting feature. And if we look, all of our stuff will update. It's incredible how this stuff happens as fast as it does. It, this is the, the beauty of git. It just handles everything automatically. You don't have to worry. There, there, it's, there's a learning curve attached to git. But once you really start getting used to using Git, it's it's incredible how, how powerful the tool is. So 
what I'm going to do is now that I'm back in this branch, I'm going to add some other stuff right here. So I'm going to log. And I don't have a logging function, so of course that's not going to work. I'm going to do a system dot diagnostics dot debug dot write line, and we don't want a two string of the input. We just want to print the the input position zero. I'm going to get rid of these warnings because they're kind of annoying, and I typically like to have this on my developer PowerShell because here's the cool thing we can also do our get stuff right here this is typically where I do it from and just so that I get you all in the uh, get you all going through the motions of doing this stuff I'm gonna get rid of this right here and we're just gonna use our developer PowerShell from now on so if we wanna quit this we're just gonna do we're, we're just gonna enter the letter Q so we're gonna try that again get log we wanna exit out of this you can try control C that's not gonna work we can try control X that's also not gonna work we have to enter the letter Q. Q as in Quebec. So we're going to add some more functionality here. So we added this here. Now we're going to add some, well, instead of functionality, we're just going to do some documentation here. Here I log the character at position 0. Save this, just Control S. Verify that this does build and run properly. So we're going to try this out, execute, looks good, we look at our debug and we printed our string and if we look at our output there is our character, the position zero character of the string input that we passed into this here function. So we added this interesting functionality, this is awesome, we're doing alright, so now we want to add these things back to our interesting feature branch so get add dot get commit dash m added some more functionality get push origin now let's see what happens if we try to push to master and we don't have origin set up of course so a repo Notice how it's going to say everything's up to date. That's because everything is up to date. We haven't made any changes to what's in master. We made changes to what's in the interesting feature branch. Try to do that and it'll work just fine. So this is once again very interesting, very good functionality because say we made our changes that uh, we want to implement in our feature branch but we're just for some reason it's like 3 4 p.m. and we just want to get out of work We've been programming all day so we for some reason accidentally enter master or maybe not accidentally we just we didn't pay attention it handles that for us it doesn't automatically push it to master so this is where the pull request comes into play so if we go back to our git if we go back to our repository I'm gonna go back to this main portion of the repository. Reload. It already shows up there though. We can tell right here there's been some changes to this here branch. So we, if, if we look at our branches we can view other branches that we have here. So if we look at our interesting feature branch we can go into this here directory. We can open up our controller. Look at our controller.cs right here and we can tell that the changes are right here. If we go back we open up our master branch, go to our controller once again, we can tell that the changes are not there, the changes that we made to that interesting feature branch. Now, this the point of that branch was not to just have it be separate forever, the point of the branch is to go and uh, make our changes and then eventually bring them back into our main branch, main or master branch, whichever, whatever you named it. So how are we going to handle that? We're going to go back to our code, we can either do our compare and pull request right here or we can handle it right here pull requests and we can enter what we want to which branch we want to pull from or which branch we want to merge into which other branch so new pull request and we want to go from this branch into our master it's able to merge so I can handle it 
this is all good to go if we have any other text here there is of course an issue now typically if you have some sort of issue here typically it's not because it's not it's usually not because that uh, I'm sorry so the reason that this might be read sometimes is normally not because of a git issue it's normally because of an issue on your end so either you push to the wrong branch or you're trying to trying to merge a branch that has not been changed into the master branch or you're trying to uh, merge a branch that is based off of match master that has no changes into the master branch it's not going to let you because why would you merge no changes into the master branch? That makes no sense. So this is able to merge, so we're gonna create our pull requests, but we can see our commits right here, and then we can also view our changes. Very interesting functionality here. Now, if we if we were to be working with, for example, Azure DevOps, which is another very popular uh, source control uh, system, it has some very similar functionality to this. So this is just, it's, it's, it's global. This is used everywhere. So we're gonna create our pull request, you see our files that have been changed and we're going to add a comment here in this in this branch I made some I added some interesting functionality make sure to be descriptive with your commit mess with your uh, messages here that you uh, write right here so we're going to create our pull request but before I create that we can add some other things here so we can add our work items now they're not popping up here but I'll show them I'll show them a little later but we we can add a work item so say we had a work item and you know what it probably be better if I just do it now so we go back to our issues here create a new issue we don't have logging add some logging And we're just going to point to that because we want to keep it simple. Here's our new issue. We can add comments to our issue. Worked on this in our in the interesting feature branch. Add this comment. We can close the issue, but we're not going to close it. We're going to work on it, and then we're going to merge our changes, or we're going to try to pull our changes and merge them into that master branch. So I'm going to go to my pull request create our new pull request and we're gonna take our interesting feature branch and try to merge it it's good to merge everything looks good here create our pull request linked issues so here's where it is so this is being a little I'm gonna pause like I said I don't wanna give you all any false information just get this perfectly I work with DevOps every day, so this is a little bit different, but it's the same stuff in theory. Okay, so we can just reference our issue right here. So I made this change, and I'll worry about the rest of the stuff here a little later, but here's who did it. Complete our pull request. So our pull request, it all went good. Everything looks good here. So we're going to add our issue right here. Here's our issue. I'm just going to leave this. Go ahead and get out of here. Open up github.com once again. Go to my repositories. And go to our pull request. So pretend now that I'm another reviewer I take a look at our interesting feature and okay looks interesting they had some commits here we don't have logging add some logging so this is an issue that got added with we can click on this issue and view what's been done with this here issue it is attached now it's since it's linked now we can now it's directly connected to this here pull request so what we can do is we can take a look at some of the changes so we look at our commits Okay, here's what they did with this here commit. All right, that looks good. That also looks good. Here's some of the files that were changed. And we're going to go back. This all looks good. I don't see any issues here. So I'm going to go ahead and merge this pull request. So there's a couple options we can do here, but for now we're just going to merge it. Looks good. 
So we go back to our code, our branch is still there. So we can still add to this here branch, but now if we look back here at our master branch, we had some changes here. Now we merged our pull request, we, we merged our uh, changes from that branch into this here master branch. So we're gonna go back to our project, week four models, do a git log, And we're still in our interesting feature, so we're gonna. And we can also see it right here. Tell our which branches we're on right here, so we can do. We can also run our get get branches. Oh, I'm sorry. Get branch, so we can see our branches right here as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check out our master branch. And you know what? I probably should have gone. Should have gone over this here too. Your selected branch has this here uh, symbol right here. This asterisk and it's uh, shown as green. So that's a pretty easy way to know which branch you're on. So we're going to check out our master branch. We're back on our master branch. But as we can tell here, no changes have been applied. So you might be thinking, what in the world is going on? I merged my changes. Why are they not, why are they not in this anymore? Why are they not showing up in the, in the master branch? Because clearly we, our changes are here. So if we look at our models, we go to our controllers, week4.cs, the changes are here. So what's going on? What's going on is you have to pull from that branch. You have to do a pull from this branch. Now, I'm going to show you an example of what might happen if you pull from the branch, but you have some other changes. So here we're going to get rid of this here and return OK. And I'm going to try not an error list. I'm going to try to pull for master. And not origin, it's repo. There we go. Notice how we get some, notice how we get this here message. So we're going to hit yes to reload all of our changes. And the changes are gone now. So just be mindful of that. Now in some instances where there's a lot of changes, you're gonna you're, you're gonna get a merge conflict or yeah I believe that's the proper terminology so you're gonna get a conflict with uh, pulling that feature pulling that new data into your project so you can just handle that by running a get merge tool now since we don't have any conflicts it probably is not gonna do a whole lot but yeah, as, as it says right here no files need merging if you do run into any merge conflicts you can run the get merge tool Get Merge tool uses Vim. If you are ever stuck in Vim and you don't know how to get out of Vim, you can just do this. QA and just hit enter and that's going to pull you right out of Vim. But as of right now, we don't have any changes, so we're just not going to worry about that right now. Everything looks good here. If we also had any merge change any uh, conflicts, we'd be able to handle them right here. And this is another the, this the get changes tool is pretty nice for merge conflicts because it it shows you it gives you graphical representation on the IDE instead of having to do it using Vim, which is kind of like Nano. So this is kind of what Vim looks like. So if I'm if I do a ls here and I go to my week four models, do another ls command. If I run a nano program.cs, nano is not a function that is in the uh, PowerShell. So I'm going to go right back to get bash. The directory is C, the path I should say, cd, c, users, recap, desktop, c sharp. To see if it takes me there. Look, yep, that looks good. And then do our ls command. So the git bash is pretty nice because it shows you which where, where there's files and where there's directories. And I'll show you as we start getting further into this here directory. So cd week four models. And I just hit tab right there, and it'll just pull up what comes up right after. Do another ls command. As we can tell, we have our master branch uh, decorator right here. So that tells us that we're in the git repository now. Or we're in a directory that ha that's uh, git enabled. That's the better terminology. And we can tell here that this is a file and this here is a directory. Pretty useful. You don't really get to see that with with the uh, 
developer PowerShell or with just PowerShell or CMD. So this is why I like to use uh, Git Bash. So CD week four models, do another LS. We want to look at our program.cs, so nano program.cs, and there we go. We can look at our changes using our nano. If we want to exit out of here, we just do control X. So yeah, that's the basics of using the git bash, of merging pull requests, of creating a new git repo, of making some changes, handling branches, handling issues. I highly suggest that you use all the functionality that I just explained here. So if you have an issue that you need to take care of when you're working in a group project, especially in the bigger group projects, just write, write the issue down. Write the issue down on your, on your Git interface right here, the GUI. So go to your issues and write your issue down and reference your issue when you're going to take care of this here pull request, whatever pull request that you're working on. Just because it makes it easier for anybody that's not working on this to go ahead and track what's going on. So for example, like programming manager or the group leader or the, te the team lead, whatever it might be. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting functionality. And if you have any questions, of course, don't be afraid to send me a message. But thank you for watching.